democratic movement in this cabinet controversy. Here now is another list that proposed by the party of national unity. As you know, there is a cabinet controversy with the orange democratic movement. Esther Dongwa Runga, born between 1980 and 1981, emerged into the world as one of seven children in a sizable household where she shared a unique bond as a twin with her brother. Petrolin and Robert Arunga were her parents. According to available information, Esther was raised in the Seventh-day Adventist faith. Her educational journey took her to Kenya High School, where she laid the foundation for her academic pursuits. Esther's quest for knowledge led her abroad to the University of Wollongong in New South Wales, Australia, where she earned a bachelor's degree in communication and law with a minor in French. Returning to Kenya for further studies, she embarked on a one-year degree course at the Kenya School of Law and subsequently achieved admission to the bar in Nairobi in 2009. Welcome to Silent Shadows. As always, if you appreciate our true crime storytelling, support our bi-weekly series by liking and subscribing. Together, we uncover compelling tales of crimes and mysteries in Kenya and beyond, presenting well-balanced narratives that respect the victims and their loved ones. Esther's professional journey unfolded in the realm of media, where she showcased her talents as an announcer and journalist at Capital FM. However, it was in 2008 that she made her first appearance on Kenyan television screens, Gracing KTN with her presence as seen here. The proposed ministries not uh, f uh, reflect what was agreed upon by President Mwai Kibaki and Prime Minister designate Raila Odinga yesterday. Here now is that list proposed by the Party of National Unity. Her news delivery was characterized by a captivating and convincing demeanor, earning her accolades and recognition. In 2008, she won the Chaguo Latinese Chat Awards for Best Teen Television News Anchor, a testament to her rising stature in the industry. Esther Arunga quickly became the poster girl for success and ambition, the envy of her peers seemingly having it all. Her trajectory appeared promising as Arunga ascended through the ranks from a business news anchor to the 9 p.m. primetime news anchor at KTN. Yet, this period marked the beginning of her tragic descent from grace, as Esther Arunga found herself entangled in a series of scandals that would cast a shadow over her once flourishing career. In 2009, Esther Arunga found herself entangled in the perplexing web of the controversial Finger of God Church, now rebranded as Kingdom Embassy International Church. The Finger of God Church was founded by Joseph Helon, who is Arunga's cousin on her maternal side. During the same year, Joseph Helon, also a famous jazz musician and saxophone player, stepped into the limelight as the musical director of Tasca Project fame Season 3, a popular Kenyan TV show. It was around this time that Quincy Timberlake, a character with a dubious background, allegedly contacted Helen via Facebook. Quincy claimed to be in the United States and expressed a desire to return home and collaborate with Helen on music projects. Helen was keen to reconnect with Quincy, whom he had known from his childhood days in Migori County, where they were not only neighbors but deskmates in primary school. However, Helen would soon discover Quincy's questionable identity. According to Helen, Quincy was originally named Joginda Sign, a name given to him by his grandfather who had named him after a popular Kenyan car racing driver. However, Quincy later changed his name from Joginda Sign to Quincy Timberlake for unknown reasons. Not only did Helen find Quincy's change of name suspicious, but he later learned that Quincy's claim of being in the United States when he reached out to him was untrue. Quincy was in Kayole, Nairobi County, Kenya. When Helen and Quincy met, Quincy asserted about his connections at Pepsi Company. 
and he promised to connect head-on with a company for music projects. Allegedly, individuals posing as Pepsi representatives conducted head-on, leading to meetings facilitated by Quincy. However, the music projects never saw the light of day. On the other hand, Esther Arunga had become deeply entrenched in the Finger of God Church, where Helen was not just a spiritual guide, but also her business partner. Together, they co-founded the People Music Group and initiated the Wata Way to the Al program. Additionally, Helen also doubled as her career coach. Leveraging his expertise in career coaching, Helen claimed to have played a pivotal role in Esther's media success, influencing aspects in her career development, such as her poise, wardrobe, pronunciation, and somewhat controversially, her weight management, which she claimed was in adherence to KTN's requirement to have slim news presenters. Helen further alleges that as a result, Esther Arunga continued to be successful in the media industry, and she even influenced other celebrities, including Lillian Muli, Linus Kantai, Jamila Mbogwa, and Penina Karibe to join the church. In a surprising turn of events, Quincy, who had initially presented himself to Helen as his music collaborator, revealed to him his desire to be a believer and join the Finger Church of God. In his newfound salvation, Quincy confessed to Helen about his dark and troubled past of practicing witchcraft to harm and take advantage of people. In hindsight, Helen believes that Quincy used witchcraft to get a runga to fall in love blindly with him. As 2009 continued to unfold, Esther Runga also moved to live with Helen and his wife, in his expansive 10-bedroom mansion in Runda, which also served as the headquarters of the Finger of God Church. Helen claimed that Esther's mother, brother, and the wife were supportive of her move from Kilimani, where she lived with her parents, to the mansion. In the midst of all this religious and career complexity, Esther Arunga was engaged to be married to Wilson Malaba, a seasoned entrepreneur serving as the CEO of Real Concepts, a prominent business consultancy firm with a footprint across Eastern Africa. Arunga and Wilson first met in 2008 during a monthly meeting for Cinema, Christians in Entertainment and Media, a forum designed to unite Christians in the media and entertainment industry. According to Wilson, he was immediately drawn to Esther's personality and intelligence. Despite Esther being in a relationship and engaged to another man at the time, Wilson patiently pursued her for a year. Eventually, Arunga made the decision to break off her engagement with the other man, opting to be with Wilson, an indication, as Wilson notes, of Arunga's challenges in making sound romantic decisions. Wilson also shared that he joined the Finger of God Church to be close to Arunga. Upon joining the church, he assumed the role of head of evangelism. Their shared involvement in the same church brought them closer, and after two months of dating, Wilson proposed to Arunga in October 2009. They then planned to have their wedding in April 2010. However, their plans were disrupted when Quincy Timberlake joined the Finger of God Church. Arunga confessed to Wilson that Quincy was pursuing her romantically. When Wilson met Quincy, he got a weird vibe. Quincy's demeanor struck him as poorly groomed, and he had a boastful personality, claiming connections to Tony Blair, the former Prime Minister of the UK, and asserting ownership of a hotel in the Bahamas. Quincy even offered free accommodation to the couple as a honeymoon gift. Unbeknownst to Wilson, Quincy would go on to snatch Esther from their impending marriage. Two months before their wedding, scheduled for April 2010, Wilson received a text from Marunga accusing him of cheating and instructing him to cease every contact with her. Simultaneously, Helen, the head pastor, 
of the Finger of God Church informed Wilson that he had been excommunicated from the church on allegations of being a Freemason. The heartbreak was profound for Wilson, but he managed to overcome it. On 16th February 2013, Wilson Malaba married the love of his life, Mudoni Njoroge, in a lavish ceremony at Loresho PCA Community Church, marking a new chapter in his life beyond the mess that Quincy and Esther brought to it. So who exactly was Quincy Timberlake? Quincy Timberlake, born on 22nd April 1980, was an elusive and persuasive con man possessing a deceptive charm. Helen alleges that Quincy was not only a con artist, but also an expert in cyber crimes and was associated with a syndicate operating from Harlingham. This cyber crime syndicate would craft phishing emails impersonating figures like Pastor Benny Hinn to deceive unsuspecting individuals into sending them money. According to Helen, Quincy also claimed to have significant wealth and media contacts in Western countries that would secure Arunga a lucrative job abroad. Helen asserts that Arunga was drawn to Quincy's promises of financial prosperity, overseas job prospects, and his bad boy persona. Before marrying Esther Arunga, Quincy was already married to Rose Mweni Mutua in 1999, and they had three sons. However, Quincy's marriage to Rose was marked by red flags, including her never meeting Quincy's family or visiting his rural home. In 2010, Rose's world shattered when she discovered via news sources that Quincy had married Esther Arunga. Quincy allegedly cut all ties with Rose and their three sons, leaving her to struggle to make ends meet through odd jobs and occasional public appeals for donations. It appears Quincy, being a con man, saw an opportunity in Esther Arunga's fame and social status to climb the social ladder. Quincy and Arunga often showcased their love and affection for each other to the media, as seen in these cringeworthy video clips. In hindsight, these were red flags of Quincy love bombing Esther and his insatiable need for media attention. In February 2010, Esther Ajunga, alongside Quincy Timberlake and Joseph Hellon, announced the formation of the Platinum Centralizer and Unionist Party of Kenya, Placenta Party. It's time to officially announce to the fourth estate that the Placenta Party of Kenya Manifesto 2010 that is important at this stage so far in a, in a journey that began in our hearts four and a half years ago is being launched today. We are ambitious and we are optimistic about the future. I'm honored to invite our presidential candidate for 2012, Joseph, uh, Joseph Helen, who will officially steer the launch. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. My name is Joseph Helen, presidential candidate for 2012. I'd like to take this opportunity to invite to the podium the chairperson, chairman of the Placenta Party, Mr. Quincy Timberlake. Please. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, very happy to stand before you here and uh, I want to indeed that we are taking things at a more level. Hello was slated to run for the presidency, with Quincy eyeing the vice presidency and Esther eyeing the member of parliament of Karachonyo constituency. Following the announcement, Esther resigned from her job at KTN. However, the trio and other members associated with the Finger of God Church were arrested on charges of running an unregistered association. Arunga was released to her parents two days later and was taken to the Chiromo Mental Health Hospital for psychiatric evaluation. Meanwhile, Quincy remained in custody. 
and Esther Arunga officially married him on that March 2010. Their marriage was officiated by Joseph Helon. On 4th March 2010, Esther, alongside Joseph Helon, held a press conference at Helon's residence and the Finger of God Church headquarters in Runda. During the press conference, Arunga revealed to the public that she had married Quincy Timberlake and had changed her name to Esther Adongo Timberlake. She further announced legal actions against media houses for alleged propaganda during her arrest and her parents for taking her to the psychiatric hospital and alleged wrongful confinement, a lawsuit she later dropped. Following Quincy's release from custody in 2010, he and Arunga's family expanded. In December 2010, they welcomed their firstborn, a baby boy named Sinclair Timberlake. In 2011, Quincy and Arunga sought asylum in Australia, citing concerns for their safety due to political affiliations. They acquired Australian citizenship and moved to Australia. In Australia, they embarked on new professional endeavors, with Arunga working as a barista at the New South Wales Supreme Court and Quincy as a mining engineer. Their family grew with the arrival of their second child in 2012 and their third child in 2014. However, in June 2014, Arunga's world was turned upside down once again. On the evening of 18th June 2014, Arunga and Quincy claimed that their three-year-old son, Sinclair Timberlake, was playing with his two-year-old sibling when he fell down the stairs. They allege that they gave him a painkiller and put him to bed, but his condition worsened. Consequently, in the wee hours of the night, they called the paramedics, who pronounced Sinclair deceased. The paramedics, following protocol, called the police at 2.30 a.m., to record statements from Arunga and Quincy, who narrated the same story to the police, that Sinclair had fallen down the stairs. On 19th June 2014, an autopsy conducted on Sinclair revealed severe injuries, some old and others new. The report showed severe internal injuries, a large burn on his head, and severe bruising on his arms and torso. Additionally, the autopsy found chili flakes in Sinclair's eyes, evidence that he was punished by having chili flakes put in his eyes. The autopsy concluded that Sinclair's death was a result of severe blunt force trauma to the abdomen, caused by punching or stomping but was inconsistent with a fall. On 25th June 2014, when Arunga and Quincy were taken to the police station for formal questioning, they continued to assert that Sinclair had fallen down the stairs. They further alleged that the burn on Sinclair's face was caused when a hot iron box fell on him days before his death, and that some scars were from alleged torture committed by others when the family lived in Kenya and also in Dubai. However, the police were suspicious and believed their story was false. When Arunga and Quincy went to view their son's body at the mortuary, Police secretly recorded them, and in the recording, police heard Quincy apologizing several times for dropping his son, referencing the Bible and the devil who had taken over his son's body. Following a thorough investigation by the police, Quincy and Arunga were arrested on 2 September 2014. In court, Arunga's friend, Christina Carroll, testified that in 2012, Sinclair had ritualistic razor-cut marks on his forehead and cheeks. And similarly, Arunga lied about him falling down the stairs. On 12 September 2014, Arunga, charged as an accessory to her son's murder, was released on bail after confessing against her husband's initial account of events on the night Sinclair died. She told the police that she had lied to cover for her husband. Arunga asserted that, on 17th June 2014, her son fell down the stairs, and after Quincy found him, he started saying that the devil was in the house. Quincy grabbed the Bible, saying he was going to slap the devil. Arunga heard that 
and found Quincy punching Sinclair in the stomach, saying, there's a devil in his stomach, I'm hitting the demon out of his stomach. When Sinclair started walking towards his mother, Quincy with rage threw him against the wall. After Sinclair fell, Quincy said, the devil has gone now, before rambling about beating the demon. As the wheels of justice turned slowly, on Friday, 29 September 2023, Quincy Timberlake was sentenced to 11 years in jail after pleading to manslaughter charges in Sinclair's tragic death. The lighter sentence came after Quincy struck a plea deal with the prosecution and his charges were reduced from murder to manslaughter. Esther Arunga, for cooperating with the police and the prosecution, was sentenced to 10 months in jail, but was released on parole. Esther Arunga remains with her children in Australia. Thank you for joining us today, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be notified when the next episode is up. Until then, take care, stay safe, and always trust your gut.